G'day ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to head out to a beautiful waterfall and learn some professional tips about shooting wide angle photography and also using a polarizer in situations how we've got wet rocks and waterfalls around. It's going to be a great vlog, I can't wait for you to join me, so let's get right into it. G'day you beautiful people and thank you for joining me on an absolutely beautiful day heading out to a new photographing location that I have found, a waterfall in a different part of Slovenia. I'm super pumped to bring you guys, teaching you some professional tips about shooting wide angle photography. If you're new to this channel, I'm Matthew Stora, a professional photographer from Australia. I travel all around the world, do crazy things and also educate you along the way. So if that interests you, please make sure to drop below and subscribe for future content. But just a quick recap today, we're learning about polarizers, learning about wide angle photography at a beautiful location here in Slovenia. So I'm gonna zip it, get my legs walking, and take you guys to this epic place. Let's get going. Okay, so we have arrived at this beautiful waterfall, an overcast day, it's like a really big soft box casting over the entire image to give really good values, not gonna blow out the highlights, not gonna have too deep shadows. Pretty cool photography conditions today to photograph a waterfall. You can see the waterfall right now, absolutely beautiful waterfall, and I wanna show you some pro tips about when shooting with a wide angle lens, focusing on these reeds, these plants growing through in the foreground, We've had a lot of rain in the last five or six days, and you can tell there are some reeds blown down because all the water rushing through, crazy amounts of rain in the last five days, but it is that beautiful time of year. But right now, it's trying to work out all the cluster, trying to get the jigsaw pieces to combine together. The most difficult part about photography, trying to get these reeds to line up with the waterfall in the background to try and get that beautiful wide angle composition. So I'm gonna spend the next 15, 20 minutes, maybe even half an hour, working out, fixing this jigsaw piece together. Glorious day for photography. When isn't though, really? Okay, so I'm all set up, and I'm sorry if the audio is not great. That waterfall is bloody loud for a tiny waterfall. But right now, I just want to take you through my process of basically when I first get to a location, because I wanted to shoot these plants just here, but we've had so much water rushing through in the last week that it's destroyed that composition. And I'll be the first to admit, I put so much effort into pre-planning a location scout. And when it does get screwed up a little bit, it takes me a little bit of time to refocus and find a new composition once I'm out here. So I've spent about 45 minutes walking around, putting the camera with a lens, the 10 24 mil at f4. I don't care where my focusing is, where my depth of field is, I'm just looking at compositions. And I'll show you on the screen right now of walking around and trying to find foreground elements to match the background, which is obviously the waterfall. Let me know in the comments below what composition you would shoot if you were here photographing. I've come down to two images. This one right here, which we're about to go through, and also one just over there. The one, the second one, I want to show you two professional tips. A polarizer in this situation, and also the angle of our wide angle lens. But right now, I want to explain to you sort of the process that I've got once I've set up. I'm focusing on this lily right here, or this plant, and then clearly in the background, the waterfall but I'm actually shooting at f11. In Fujifilm, I like to keep around that f8 to f9. It's a really, I get the sharpest depth of field for those apertures. But with f11, so if I was to shoot at f8, I have to focus stack three times. Once here, once on the near foreground, and then on the background. But if I jump up to f11, I've got two positives. 
When the sun goes behind the cloud, which it will shortly, I'm lowering that shutter speed, so it's gonna give me some silky water in that waterfall. But also secondly, and most importantly, I only have to focus stack twice now, which is what I really want. I wanna limit my post-production. So right now I'm focusing on the foreground. I wanna be really careful that I've got no movement in this plant here because once I focus the F11, it's giving me one over 15 seconds. So a really, really shallow shutter speed. So I wanna make sure there's no movement. In the background, I don't really care because I want that movement in the waterfall. So I'm gonna wait around now for that soft box effect to come back. The sun's going behind a cloud. But here is this beautiful image, focus stack twice, one in the foreground, one in the background, a really simple composition. Alrighty, so we are all set up. Second composition, very similar to the first one, but there's two very, very important aspects that I wanna talk about when shooting wide angle photography, especially at a waterfall. The first one is a polarizer, and the second one is the angle of the wide angle lens. But first of all, we're gonna to touch on the polarizer. If you wanna learn how to use a polarizer and what it is doing in a more in-depth vlog, make sure to head up here and you can watch a full vlog just about using a polarizer, especially on waterfall situations. But I've got a very cool polarizer. It's a free will magnetic filter, so I can just take it off, spin it around until it's engaged. I'm gonna show you on the back of my camera in a minute how do we know when it's engaged, and then just plop it on the front of my lens, and it is so, so simple, especially around water areas like that. Don't worry about dropping my polarizer. But you can see, when I spin the polarizer right now, it is removing all that glare from the waterfall, especially the pool in front of the waterfall. And if I just take it on and off, on and off, you can see it's not only reducing that glare in the, the water pool in front of the waterfall, but also this beautiful leaf here in front of me, it's adding more vibrance into that, which is very, very good in situations like we are right now. The second one I wanna talk about, which is very important, I wanna speak more about composition on this channel because composition sets you away from a beginner, amateur, and professional. But the tip I wanna give right now when shooting wide angle is angling the wide angle. So a lot of people would just shoot basically 90 degrees. So we've got the horizontal coming across, camera and lens 90 degrees up. We don't want to do that. We obviously wanna set our tripod at 90 degrees and then I try and angle my lens at about a 25 or 30 degree. What this is going to do, I'm going to jump on the back of this camera right now and I want you to focus on the waterfall. When I set it to around 90 degrees, the waterfall looks a fairly long way away, but when I lean this forward, you can see the waterfall almost approaches. There's sort of less distance between the foreground and background. So if we just give that little bit of an angle, it almost compresses the waterfall. So that's the waterfall, this is the leaf, this is them going away and going all the way forward. So that's what I try and do. So just angling that, it's such minute because when we use 10 mil, I'm using 10 mil on my lens right now. Every little, if I move one centimeter back, that is crazy to the composition. So we really want to focus on getting this angle correct and obviously making sure our foreground is in focus. So right now I'm shooting, I have to stitch three together, unfortunately, to focus stack. So focus on the very near foreground, the middle of the leaf and then the background which I'm trying to get. And the cloud is just coming over right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and expose this image. But here is this image, but remembering, a polarizer, the number one thing we have to worry about, and utilizing that second angle, so not just always shooting at 90 degrees. Here is this beautiful image. So there we had that little session done. I really enjoyed that because even for me, I'll be honest with you, this is quite new territory. It's very difficult in the area of Spain I live to photograph, you know, emphasizing foregrounds. I see places like Washington, Oregon, Scotland, Tasmania, they, these places, they have these images to capture the ferns. I remember watching some vlogs from Andrew Ma, another great Australian photographer, 
and I just love this type of storytelling. It's very difficult in this part of Slovenia. So in the comments below, if you've got any tips, tricks, let me know if in locations in Slovenia, this would be absolutely amazing also. Something I do want to get better at, emphasizing foregrounds with ridiculous backgrounds. I don't know there's something about it. I want to go home now, edit these images to see where I can improve. I love improving my composition skills in editing process. That makes sense, yeah, that makes sense. Because as me done for today, if you love this content, give it a huge thumbs up. If you really, really enjoy it, give it a subscribe because there's a lot more to come next week. I'll see you guys then. Ciao.